Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast Special Edition Show, my 2023-24 MLB offseason prediction show. Um, this is one of my favorite shows to do every year, so I can look back on after the offseason and when the season starts to see how wrong I am, or even, in some cases, how right I am. So what I did this year is I broke it down by team, Go over team needs, ideal fits, and then a prediction for every team. Ideal fits and predictions are matching in some and not matching in others. And then I'm going to go over my official picks for the free agents after I go team by team. And then I have some miscellaneous surprises at the end of the show. All right, we'll start the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, team needs. Um, third baseman. Outfielder, relief pitching. Um, I don't think their bullpen was great in the World Series, but it was great in some of the other series. Um, they need some help in the outfield. Um, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., free agent. Third base, Evan Longoria. He might retire at this point. Um, Matt Chapman is an ideal fit for this team. Um, he would be a big bat in that lineup to go with Corbin Carroll. And the young talent they have. But my prediction is that the team brings back Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Six years, $120 million. Um, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., that was a big trade for them. And he was a big part of the World Series run. So I think they bring him back. The Atlanta Braves. Uh, team needs starting pitching, relief pitching, left field. Um, ironically, Gurriel Jr. would be a really good fit on this team. With the talent they have with Acuna and Austin Riley. Michael Harris. But my prediction for them is that they sign Michael Brantley to years $20 million. Um, I think it's a short contract. And Brantley, I think, wants to go to a contending team like he was in Houston. Baltimore. Team need. Starting pitching. Yes. You can't emphasize that enough. And they also need some relief help, too, with um, Bautista Hurt. I think that he's going to miss part of next year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the fit for this team is Aaron Nola. They need a bona fide ace at the top of that rotation, ideally. But they are also banking on Grayson Rodriguez to be that. But let's be honest, there's no way Kyle Bradish is repeating his fourth in the Cy Young voting again next season. No chance. But I think that Aaron Nola is too expensive for them, and I don't see Angelos overpaying for Aaron Nola. So I'm going to say the team signed Sonny Gray, four years, $80 million. I think that would be a nice signing, maybe $90 million for Sonny Gray for four years. But I think Sonny Gray would fit well in that ballpark now with the expanded left field. Um, the Boston Red Sox, um, team needs um, DH on and pitching. Um, ideal fit, Jorge Soler. I like the idea of Soler and Fenway hitting home runs over the Green Monster. And my prediction is that they actually signed Solaire four years, $70 million. And that would be a nice signing for Boston. Um, the Chicago Cubs, um, team needs, um, they need a DH. And they need pitching. Um, but I like the rest of their roster from a flexibility standpoint of where they can put any guy at any position. The ideal fit for the Chicago Cubs is Shohei Otani. Um... They need a DH, and they also need someone to go at the top of the rotation with Justin Steele. Justin Steele did finish high in the Cy Young voting, but is he really Garrett Cole? I don't know. My prediction for the Chicago Cubs is that they sign Shohei Otani, 10 years, $500 million. There you go. Bada bing, bada boom. Otani to the Cubs very early. I'm revealing this prediction in the podcast. That's just a coincidence that the team I had him going to um, ends up early in the alphabet from a city standpoint. So future Chicago Cubs Shohei Otani. I think that, um, like I said, he'd be a great fit there. I think that they are poised to make big moves. Craig Council's there now. I thought about Otani to the Cubs even before Council was um, brought upon last week, but with the signal with Council coming in, you know the Chicago Cubs team is here to win now, and they're going to go into next season as the favorites, 
in the NL Central. And a big part of Otani to the Cubs prediction is Saya Suzuki plays for the Cubs. And I think that the recruiting is real there. So Otani to Chicago. Um, the Chicago White Sox. Um, team needs um starting pitcher, shortstop, second base, catcher, and pretty much everywhere else on the roster. Um, this is probably the worst roster in baseball right now. Um, the ideal fit here is Jonathan India from the Reds. Uh, India is somebody that I think the Reds are looking to move because of their surplus of youth, especially in the infield. So you would think that Chicago wants to target somebody young. And obviously India here is for trade purposes. Um, And my prediction is that the team trades Dylan Cease to the New York Mets for infielder Louis Engel, Acuna, catcher Kevin Parada, righty Mike Vasile, and righty Tyler Stewart. I think this is going to be a desperate trade by Steve Cohen and David Stearns because they're going to miss out on Otani. And they may miss out on a few other pitchers. And Cease is somebody that is an ace. And they are lacking that now with Verlander and Scherzer traded. And Cody Senga, yeah, he finished second in Rookie of the Year. And he got some Cy Young votes too. But I don't think he's the answer for an ace to me. He's a number two pitcher. Dylan Cease, to me, is a more likely bona fide number one than um, Cody Senga. So, um... That would be an ideal trade for the Metropolitans. The Cincinnati Reds. Um, team needs, they need relief pitching and outfield help. Um, ideal fit is Alex Verdugo, and I say this for a trade purposes, because Verdugo is in trade rumors. Um, but my prediction is that the team improves their rotation and signs Eduardo Rodriguez, five years, $130 million. Um The Reds have a lot of youth in their rotation, and they are banking on a lot of guys to make leaps, such as Hunter Green and Nick Lodolo. Um, Graham Ashcraft, is he going to repeat some success he had last year? Same with Andrew Abbott. So I have questions for the Reds' rotation. At least Erod is a proven commodity. All right, the Cleveland Guardians. Um... They have some needs. They have, um, you know, um, guys that they might want to trade. But they also have a team that is built to uh, potentially be a player in the AL Central next year. Ideally, the um, all right. So team names I had: relief pitching, backup catcher, and fourth outfielder. Um, to me, the ideal guy for this Guardians team is reliever Dylan Floro, who is a free agent. Um, my prediction for the Guardians is that the team trades Shane Bieber to the St. Louis Cardinals for righty Tink Hence, righty Tacoa Roby, lefty Quinn Matthews, and outfielder Michael Ciani. Um... Bieber probably could have been traded at the deadline last season if he didn't get injured. The Cardinals, I think, are a team that wants to bounce back in a big way next year after the disastrous year they had. They still have a ton of talent on the roster, and they obviously need some pitching. So Bieber would be a really good ace at the top of the rotation for the Gar- or for the Cardinals. I almost said the Guardians. Um, well, he's currently on the Guardians. Um Next up is the Colorado Rockies. Um, Team needs for them, I have starting pitching, relief pitching, first base, outfield, DH. Um, To me, the ideal fit is Reese Hoskins, obviously coming off the injury, and then him in the course field, to me, is ideal. Um, My prediction, though, is that the team signs Hunter Renfro 3 for 36. Um, I think that... They also need outfield help. Um, Renfro obviously knows that division well, and the Rockies tend to be good at um, making trade targets out of 
um, guys that tend to sign for short-term money. So I like the idea of Hunter Renfro in Colorado. Next up is the Detroit Tigers. Um, so my team needs for them is starting pitching, relief pitching. Well, every team can pretty much use that. Catcher, second base, DH. The ideal fit for this team is a guy that they had several years ago, and his name is J.D. Martinez. Just to have a veteran there that can come in and um, help the young team grow. But I think they'll address starting pitching, and they'll sign Marcus Stroman, three years, $80 million. Um, Stroman in that ballpark, I think, is ideal. Um, I think that Stroman wants to... Uh, really prove that he is still capable of being a number one guy in a rotation, or at least a number two. So I like the idea of him on the Detroit Tigers. Um, next up, I have the Houston Astros. Um, team needs uh, pitching for both starting and relieving, catcher, left fielder, center fielder. Um. To me, the ideal fit is Jack Peterson. He's a free agent. Um, and Peterson, to me, is a guy that I think could use a little bit of a different scenery. And I have Peterson going to Houston 3 for 60. That's my prediction for them. Um, he's younger than Michael Brantley. He's a different kind of player than Michael Brantley. He's someone that could just pop him out of the ballpark. And I think that that left field there would be big for Jock who I know is a lefty, but can go oppo. Next up is the Kansas City Royals. Um, team needs uh, starting and relief pitching, first base, second base, third base, center field, right field, DH. They have a ton of holes on that team. The ideal fit is Tommy Pham. I just like the idea of Pham there. He could play a bunch of different outfield positions. He could DH at this point. But my prediction for them is that they trade Salvador Perez. Two, the Houston Astros for outfielder Jacob Melton, righty Rhett Coba, and catcher first base Miguel Palma. Um, the Astros have needed a real catcher for a while now. Um, Sal will be a really good fit on Houston. I think the Astros are disgusted with how the season ended, getting blown out at home by the their rival Rangers, who ended up winning the World Series. So you know that Houston... Is going to try to take one last kick at the can with this current core of players it has. Next up, I have the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Team needs. Um, as of right now, um, starting pitching, relief pitching, shortstop, DH. It's probably going to be more than that. Um... Assuming that uh, Shoei does not return to Anaheim. Um, and I do not think he returns to Anaheim. Obviously, I have him going to the Cubs, which means that a certain somebody is going to be in trade rumors, and that gentleman's name is Mike Trout. My guess is that he asks out, requests a trade. I think they're going to trade him. And I think they're going to trade him to a team that is um, upset with how their season ended um, a month ago. And it's going to be a homecoming for Trout. As I have him traded to the Philadelphia Phillies for righty Andrew Painter, outfielder Justin Crawford, outfielder Simone Nazilotti, righty Micah Ottenbright, and shortstop Brian Rincon. Um, that is an absolute slam dunk. For both sides, um, the Phillies obviously need a center fielder. Um, he would be a big upgrade in the outfield. Bryce Harper and him would be teammates then, um, with Bryce now being a first baseman. Schwarber, DH. And Nicholas Castellanos, that contract's just immovable. But maybe Nicholas Castellanos is a throw-in in the deal. Maybe not. 
Actually, let's 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 do it. We'll throw in Nicholas Castellanos in in the deal. So Castellanos is a throw in with Painter, Crawford, Nuziati, Ottenbright, and Rincon. So Angels reset, obviously. Get all they can get for Trout. And then maybe they try to flip in Castellanos into something in the summer. And I forgot to mention this. The ideal fit I have for them is Tim Anderson. Because they need a shortstop. And I think Anderson and Anaheim would be a good fit for Anderson. who's somebody that they can also turn around and trade at the deadline. Next up is the Dodgers. Um, team needs pitching, just really pitching. Um, the ideal fit is Blake Snell. Um, they need someone to lead that rotation. Um, Julio Urias, I think they want to move on from from all the uh, legal stuff. Um, and Clayton Kershaw, it, granted he's a free agent, but um. He is not an ace anymore. Um, and there's a guy on the market that just won a Cy Young, Blake Snell, who happened to pitch against the Dodgers several times for, over the last few years with being in San Diego. And that is the ideal fit for the Dodgers. And guess what? I have Snell signing with the Dodgers, six years, $200 million, And that's my prediction for the Dodgers. Um, I think Snell in L.A. would be a fabulous fit. They need an ace on top of that rotation. And Snell is somebody that's been hurt in the past. I get it. But is very capable of um, putting together um, good innings for the Dodgers. Next up, I have the Miami Marlins. Um, team needs catcher and DH. I think they're set with pitching. I, I like the Marlins pitching staff. Um the ideal fit for the Marlins is Salvador Perez, who I have being dealt to the Astros. I almost picked Perez to the Marlins, but I didn't go there. But instead, I have the team signing J.D. Martinez, three years, $60 million. Um, I think J.D. would be a really good fit with Miami with that young group that they have, team that made the playoffs a year ago. They just have to improve their offense. Um. Next up, I have the Milwaukee Brewers, who I think are going to have a busy winter. Um, they have a lot of needs. They need pitching for both start and relief. Um, third base, right field, and DH. Um, the ideal fit for them is Teoscar Hernandez. He's someone that can play in the outfield and can DH on occasion, too. Um, obviously had a good year this past year. And guess what? I think he goes to Milwaukee. Six years, $180 million. Um, Like I said, they need a stable Iser in the outfielder who can also DH on occasion. I think Hernandez in Milwaukee would be a decent fit. Next up, I have the Minnesota Twins. Um, team needs a starting pitching, relief pitching, first base, and left field. Ideal fit is Corbin Burns, who um, I think has a good chance to be traded this offseason after he wasn't dealt in the summer. And Burns is somebody that is going to be a free agent in the, in a year from now. Um, so my prediction for Minnesota, I don't think they'll trade for Burns. Instead, I think they go to the free agent market and they sign Jordan Montgomery Five years, $125 million. Montgomery had that great run with the Rangers in the postseason. A bunch of big innings and shutouts for them. And he would be an ideal replacement for Sonny Gray and arguably an upgrade in some people's eyes. Although Sonny Gray did um, just finish second in the AL Cy Young voting. So um, maybe it's not an upgrade, but maybe a long-term upgrade. I just need to see how old... Each guy is. So Sonny Gray is 34. And Montgomery is 30. So from an age standpoint, it might be an upgrade. In long term, it might be an upgrade. Because Sonny Gray 
Loki is 34 years old and um, Drew Montgomery is younger. Um, next up's the New York Mets. Um, they need both starting and relief pitching, second base, or outfield, depending on what you want to do with Jeff McNeil and DH. Um, an ideal fit for the New York Mets is um, Yashinobu Yamamoto, who um, the Mets are doing everything and their power to get this guy. Although Aaron Nola would be a good fit there too. But Yamamoto has the connection with Senga and um he won't cost as much as Nola, so that's making a case for Yamamoto for the Mets, and it's just an upside play. And I think Dylan Cease is a good fit too. That's who I have them acquiring. But my prediction for this team, I have them signing Elvis Andrews, 3 for 58. Um, Andrews plays second base now, and that's a need on this team. He's a good defensive player. And Andrews is somebody that is more valuable than um, giving credit for. And he's bounced around a little bit over the past several years. He was on the White Sox. Um, maybe a better situation if he were to go to the Mets. Next up is the New York Yankees. Um, they're the team that's under some pressure to uh, make some moves. Um, not as much pressure as last year because um, 99 is not a free agent again. And obviously 99 is one of the best, if not the best player in baseball. Um so there needs starting pitching, uh, center field or left field, depending on how you feel. And then um, I have third base down as a need, too. Um, the ideal fit for the Yankees is Juan Soto. Um, he just would come in um, and be the left fielder. And in center field, you could just um, get a, a plug in there until – or you put Aaron Judge there until um, uh, Jason Dominguez comes back next year. Um, so, um, for the Yanks, I have them, for my prediction, actually signing Yasunobu Yamamoto, 6 for 160. I think they get him instead of the Mets. Um, this feels like, um, a move that might surprise some people, considering that Yamamoto has the same agent as Giancarlo Stanton, and Giancarlo Stanton and Cashman are not getting along right now, but this is a different client we're talking about. And you know that um, the client's going to go for the money, not for somebody that you're not getting along with. And I could see a world where Yamamoto might want to go to the Yankees over the Mets. I know the Mets have the bigger need. I understand that. But I could just see the Yankees throwing more cash out for Yamamoto than the Mets. It's just um, just random. I, I've seen weird things happen before. Um, next up is the Oakland Athletics. Team needs um, pitching, both starting in relief, first base, second base, third base, DH. Um, outfield's actually not terrible. Um, and they have prospects coming in the wings, and they have a catcher. Um, ideal fit, Whit Merrifield. Um, Merrifield is somebody that really hasn't, been the same since his peak royal days and um i think that oakland he can go there and try to put up numbers and then oakland can flip him in the summer um my prediction for the a's team trades paul blackburn to the san diego padres for ready gyro iriate outfielder jacob marseille and lefty jagger haynes um the padres make sense for blackburn i have them losing blake snell new darvish is still there um they do have depth but they also need um some more pitching. Obviously, they'll replace Snell. I think Blackburn would be a cheap um, ad for San Diego. Number 21, the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, team needs starting pitching, relief pitching, center field. The ideal fit is Mike Trout. We already predicted Mike Trout back to Phil- um, getting traded back to home to Philadelphia, which um, would be great 
for the Phillies and for Trout and his family. Um, but my prediction for the Phillies here is that the team re-signs Aaron Nola, eight years, $275 million. I think that that owner wants to do everything to keep his ace in town or his co-ace in town. And I think it'd be devastating for the Phillies to lose somebody that they drafted and is a homegrown player. So the homegrown thing... And I think the Phillies are going to go over the moon to try to retain its ace in Arenola. Um, the Pittsburgh Pirates are next. Um, team needs um, starting pitching, relief pitching, first base DH. I think Carlos Santana is a good fit. He might have been on the Pirates this past year, if I'm not mistaken. But um, I do think that, yeah, he was. And then he got traded to Milwaukee. But I also think he'd go to Pittsburgh and put up some numbers. And then uh, parlay it into a trade again. Um, but my prediction for the Pirates is that the team signs Kyle Gibson, two for 30. Um, he's somebody that can come in and um, pitch well and get traded too. Um, Gibson and Pittsburgh, I think, is a good fit. Big ballpark, and I think Gibson is better suited for um, large ballparks. Um the San Diego Padres, um, team needs um, starting pitching, relief pitching, outfield, first base, DH. Um, Jordan Montgomery, this is the ideal spot for him. Um, he can come in and replace Blake Snell. Um, not, like, ideal from, like, a production and upside standpoint, but he's somebody that could uh, recoup the innings and whatnot. Downgrade, but not the biggest drop-off ever, considering how good Montgomery was in the playoffs. But my prediction for the San Diego Padres is that the team trades Juan Soto to the New York Yankees for DH and Car- to Carlos Stanton and outfielder um, Everson Priera, um... Righty Chase Hampton, righty Randy Vasquez, and catcher first base Ben Rice. Um, I think that Juan Soto is just the the perfect guy for the Yankees. He is a lefty bat that they desperately need to uh, hit the short porch sometimes there. Um, Anthony Rizzo has been that for them, but he hasn't been healthy. And... He can't be relied on to be healthy 162 games. I mean, who is relied on to be 162 games healthy? I mean, you can't even ask Shoy Otani or Aaron Judge to stay healthy for 162 games anymore. So Juan Soto is durable. Um, He did play in every game this past season, to his credit, unlike Aaron Judge and Shoy Otani. And I think that him... And Yankee Stadium is absolutely perfect. So he could be their left fielder. They get rid of the Stanton money. And maybe the Yankees take on some of the money. They they take on like 50% and the Padres take on the rest. And then Stanton could come in and be the Padres DH and help um, replace Juan Soto's production. So you know the Padres are going to want to get some real guys to remain competitive. That's why I have them dealing for Blackburn. And I have them getting Stanton in that trade. Um, the San Francisco Giants. Um, team needs um outfield, DH, first base, second base. Um, the ideal fit for them is Cody Bellinger. I love the idea of Bellinger in San Francisco. Um, he's somebody that could take advantage of right field there. Um. And I think they actually signed Bellinger eight years, $220 million. I think it's going to be a terrible overpay contract. And it's a contract that's going to be bad even three years from now. Um, but for short term, I think it's a wonderful fit. Um, going to be playing against the Dodgers. And you know how Bellinger is going to feel about playing his former team. And you know that the Giants are going to go all in to try to win. With Bob Melvin there now. Um, next up is the St. Louis Cardinals. Team needs starting pitching, relief pitching, outfield. Ideal fit, um, Julio Urias. Um, the Cardinals, to me, need 
somebody that can come in and have ace upside. Um, and the Cardinals, obviously, are a team that um, got rid of Jordan Montgomery at the deadline. Miles Mikolas is thirty, going to be 36 years old. Dakota Hudson, so they have no, like, proven ace. So that's why I have them dealing for Shane Bieber. So, um, yes, Urias in St. Louis, I think, is an ideal fit. And my bold prediction... for um, the cards is that I have them signing Adam Duvall, two for 20. Um, Duvall is somebody that can come in and is a guy that can get on a heater and could um, really swing teams' seasons and games. And back to Urias, um, I'm going to make a prediction for him, but I think, obviously, he will not pitch in 2024 because he's expected to obviously be suspended. Next up is the Seattle Mariners team needs relief pitching um, right field DH. The ideal fit for the Mariners is Josh Hader. Um, obviously, they do need help in the bullpen. Um, they traded the closer last year to Arizona, and that actually worked out because Arizona made the World Series, and I'm talking about Paul Seawald. And there's a lot of unknowns in the Mariners' bullpen, so I think Josh Hader there makes a lot of sense. But my prediction for this team is that they acquired Jonathan India from the Cincinnati Reds for shortstop Cole Emerson, outfielder Lazaro Montez, righty Walter Ford, and righty Marcelo Perez. Um, India and Seattle change the scenery. Um, you could have um, some moments there as him and uh, J-Rod together would be fun. Next up is the Tampa Bay Rays. Team needs for them I have starting pitcher, Catcher, DH, and now shortstop all of a sudden is low-key in need. But they have prospects that can uh, come in and fill that spot um, from a long-term standpoint. Um, ideal fit for the Rays is Mitch Garver, who I really like. But my bold prediction for them is that the team trades Tyler Glass now to the Texas Rangers for righty Owen White, first baseman, Abelnek Ortiz, lefty Antoine Kelly, and outfielder Alejandro Osuna. Um, so, Glasnow to Texas. Um, Texas, obviously, is going to lose Jordan Montgomery, probably. And if they don't get Jacob DeGrom back until next year, Max Scherzer, free agent, after next year, too. So, a long-term debt play for Texas here. Um... And speaking of Texas, they're next. Um, team needs. Starting pitching, relief pitching, outfield. Ideal fit, Tyler Glasnow. Um, I mean, Otani's a good fit, too, obviously. But imagine if he went there. Whew. Then they would be like my pick, the repeat. And you don't see me uh, pick repeat champions often on the podcast. But I would consider them the repeat if... Um, and I still would consider them the repeat with or without Otani. Because they're a really good team. And I have them getting Tyler Glass now. And I have someone else that I have going to the Rangers. And it's their biggest need. And that's relief pitching. I have them signing Josh Hader. Six years, $120 million. He's going to break Edwin Diaz's record for the uh, relief pitcher contract. Um, I love Josh Hader. He's amazing. 1.28 ERA last year. And he would just be... A great fit in Texas. 
Next up, I have the Toronto Blue Jays. Team needs right-handed pitching, or I'm sorry, relief pitching, starting pitching, third base, right field, DH. A lot of free agents on this team, so Toronto's under some pressure here. Um, ideal fit, Sean Manaya. Um I like Sean Manaya. He's a really fine pitcher and somebody that um, would just show flashes and um, whatnot. But my prediction for the team is that they re-signed Matt Chapman, five years, $140 million. Um, They gave up a lot to get Matt Chapman, so got to bring him back, right? So I think this is going to be similar to last year a little bit where a lot of big guys that are free agents go back to their teams like Judge last year. Obviously, Otani being the exception, I have him leaving. But like Aaron Nola, I have going back to the Phils. I have Matt Chapman going back to the Jays. Lourdes Gurriel going back to the D-backs and a couple of others. Next up, the Washington Nationals. Um, team needs starting end relief pitching, second and third base, left and center field. Ideal fit, Adam Frazier, good second baseman. That can parlay a good half season into either or both all-star appearance and trade. Kind of like Hamer Candelario last year on the Nats. My prediction for the Nats is that they signed Michael Lorenzen three years, $40 million. I like Michael Lorenzen. Um, he had a good year at the Tigers last year, and then he got traded to the Phillies. And I think that the Nats want to be a little bit more competitive and improve their rotation, so I've been getting Lorenzen. Okay. So there you have it for like the team segment. So uh, official picks. Some of these I said already, and other free agents I did not discuss. Um, Shoy Otani, Cubs. Uh, that's the big one. Um, Saya Suzuki is a big part of his recruitment there, and then they get Craig Council. You know the Cubs are really serious. Um, and then I have Yashinobu Yamamoto going to the Yankees. Um, they have a need in their rotation as for like the 2-3 spot behind Garrett Cole. Carlos Rodon was a big bust last year. Luis Severino, free agent. Michael King's not really a starting pitcher. He was good in the rotation the second half of last year, but to me, he's more of a long man type of guy that is above average. Nestor Cortez is somebody that they might trade. You're hearing that a lot. He's going to be a free agent soon. So Yamamoto to the Yankees makes a lot of sense. Blake Snell I have going to the Dodgers. Um... I love the idea of Snell and the Dodgers. Um, they need that bona fide ace, and Snell is that. Cody Bellinger, I'm going to the Giants. We talked about it. They have the need at center field. And I think that's a team that's trying to win now. Um, Aaron Nola, back to the Phillies. We talked about that already. I think Phillies' ownership and Dave Dombrowski aren't going to let that one slide. Um, I mean, the only way that is plausible for them to make up for it is if they sign Blake Snell and Nola leaves. That's okay. Or Yamamoto, or they try to get Otani, obviously, but he's not pitching next year. Um, so that's kind of off the table from like a uh, pitching standpoint for 2024. Um, so yeah. Next up, I have Josh Hader to the Rangers. We talked about that a couple of seconds ago. Um, outstanding fit. Huge need for the Rangers. Kind of got away with it in their run this past year. Last year's, this past year's Rangers team reminded me a lot of the 2018 Red Sox, although this Rangers team to me was better because of their starting pitching. And arguably that Red Sox team's offense was better. But they, they need Josh Hader in the worst way, or at least a, a competent reliever. And the best reliever free agent in a long time is right here with Josh Hader. I have Sonny Gray going to the Baltimore Orioles. Um, obviously, like I said earlier, just a really good fit with um, him and uh, Rodriguez. And I will see about Kyle Bradish. I wonder what Kyle Bradish's trade value is right now. Um, free agent in 2029. Um, obviously, um, he improved in a big way this past year, but this is still Kyle Bradish, but we don't know if um he's under three ERA good or not. So um Sonny Gray Orioles good fit. And Sonny Gray's better than Kyle Bradish. Um Jordan Montgomery twins. Um we talked about that. Like that's 
not the biggest drop off ever for Minnesota if they were to get Jordan Montgomery to replace Sonny Gray. JD Martinez, I have him going to the Marlins. We talked about that earlier. Just a good fit with that young offense. I have the Blue Jays re signing Matt Chapman. That makes a lot of sense. Jorge Soler, I have going to the Red Sox. Eduardo Rodriguez to the Reds. Talked about that earlier. A player, Jung Hu Lee. I have him going to the Royals. Lee is somebody that is an outfielder. And the Royals obviously need more talent there. Um, Yuli Gurriel Jr. I have to back to the Diamondbacks. Like I said, big part of their World Series run. I have him going back. Another player that is interesting in the Frazier market is Shota Imanaga, who is a pitcher. I have him going to the Nationals. Um, like I said, the Nationals need some pitching. Teoscar Hernandez, I have going to the Brewers. We talked about that earlier. Reese Hoskins to the Rockies. I just think that's a really good fit. Um, Lucas Giolito, I have signing with the New York Mets. Um, so I have two former White Sox going to the Mets. That's weird. But I think Giolito is a good upside play if you're the Mets. Why not? I think um, whoever gets Giolito, as long as the contract's right, could be a very good signing. Um, I just think he was in a terrible situation in Chicago last year. Um, Yariel Rodriguez, I have going to the Red Sox. Um, I believe he uh, was a reliever. Yes, he was. Um, for the Chinichi Dragons. So um, the Red Sox obviously need a lot of help. So Rodriguez there makes sense. Whit Merrifield, I'm going to Oakland. We talked about Merrifield earlier. And how good of a fit I think he'd be in Oakland. Um, Marcus Stroman, I have going to Detroit. We talked about that earlier. Hamir Candelario, I have going to the Dimebacks. They have a need at third base with um, Evan Longoria probably not coming back. Uh, Jack Flaherty, I have going to the San Francisco Giants. They need some pitching in that rotation to go with Logan Webb. And Flaherty in San Francisco makes sense. But I almost picked Jack Flaherty to the Cubs, but I have someone else going to the Cubs instead. Um, so stay tuned. Um, Hunter Renfro, I have going to the Rockies. We talked about that earlier. Um, Harrison Bader, I have going to the Cubs. They have a need in center field, and I think that they lose out on Bellinger. Araldis Chapman, I have going back to the Texas Rangers. Um, I think Chapman was happy with Texas and... Obviously, he is, has another ring. It's, um, he obviously had his first ring with the Cubs in 16. Um, and obviously now he has another one with the Rangers, so I think he goes back there. CJ Crone, I'm going to the Rays. I just love the idea of Crone on Tampa. I, I can't end the dream, can I? Um, Michael Conforto, I'm going to the White Sox just to rebuild the value kind of thing. And then the White Sox can flip him into something. Um, Adam Duvall, I'm going to the Cardinals. We talked about that earlier. Julio Urias, I've gone to Boston. Um, I think he's suspended next year, so I think Boston signs him to maybe to like a um, maybe like a four year, maybe four for one ten, four for a hundred kind of thing. Maybe it's two for sixty. No, that'd be a little too rich. Maybe two for two for fifty five, two for fifty. But I think he's going to get high salary, but um, maybe not a lot of years like we thought he would have at this time a year ago. Mitch Garver of going to the Rays, I just think that's an excellent fit for them. And plus they have a lot of needs now with um, Shane McClanahan out for next year probably and no more Wander Franco. Um, Randall Gritchick I have going to Seattle. I think that is... A reasonable fit there. And he could be like a fourth outfielder kind of guy. I have Clayton Kershaw returning to the Dodgers. He's a Dodger for life. There's no way he doesn't go back there. And I think it's a lock he goes back there. That's the lock of the uh, 
of the off season, and it's been the lock of the off season the last couple of years about Clayton going back to the Dodgers. But obviously, like I wouldn't be shocked if it's a two year deal because he's not going to pitch until the summer. So I think that's going to be a two year deal. Michael Lorenzen, I have going to the Nationals. I talked about that already. Kenta Maeda, I have going to the Blue Jays to be a back end guy there. Hector Norris, I have going to the Mets. They need some relief help. James Pax, I have going to the Rays. Maybe a one year deal to replace McClanahan's production for a year. Jock Peterson, I have going to the Astros. We talked about that earlier. David Robertson, I have returning to the Marlins. Um, he was a, a big part of their second half push. At, um. Last year, or last season, uh, Luis Severino is a free agent. I have him going to the Kansas City Royals just on a one-year prove-it deal. Uh, maybe he gets traded if he's good, kind of like Chapman last year. Um, Gio Urshela, I have going to the Washington Nationals um, to be potentially this season's Hamer Candelario for them. Just like I have with um, Michael Lorenzen. Um, from a pitching standpoint. And Yasmani Grandal, I have going to the Miami Marlins. Um, I just think that is a, a a good landing spot for him. Adam Frazier, I'm going to say White Sox. Um, similar to uh, Conforto. Parlay a good first half into a trade kind of deal. Okay, so other trades. I have five bonus trades. Trade number one, I have the Milwaukee Brewers trading Corbin Burns to the Chicago Cubs for righty Cade Horton, righty Ben Brown, lefty Drew Gray, and shortstop Josh Rivera. Um, I think the Cubs are all in. They're here to win. Um, and then their 2025 rotation is going to be Burns, Otani, Justin Steele. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Um. But I think that his team is all in to win. I know um, they're probably mad at the at the uh, Cubs right now. The Brewers are because of the council situation. But um, sometimes you need the best deals to move on from guys that want to be traded. Um, I have the Brewers also trading Christian Yelich to the Minnesota Twins for outfielder Emmanuel Rodriguez, righty Simone Woods Richardson, and utility Ben Ross. Um, Yelich. Um, change of scenery potentially. Um, I do have them signing uh, Hernandez, but I'm going to say that Yelich is dealt first. And I think that um, Yelich um, wants to be in a, a better situation. He had a decent year last year, so I think he could get a lot back in return. But um, the three years prior to this year, he was terrible. So which Yelich are you going to get? So I could see them moving on. I have the Yankees trading Glaber Torres to the San Francisco Giants for relief pitcher Taylor Rogers, shortstop Walker Martin, and righty Keaton Wynn. Um, nice package for New York to get back. They need relief help with uh, some of their guys being injured um, going into next season. And you can never have too many relievers. Um, so I like the idea of Rodgers in New York. And then Glaber, he's a really good offensive talent, but he's just a lazy defensive player. And I personally don't think that Aaron Boone is disciplinary enough like Joe Girardi was with Gary Sanchez before he got fired, obviously. So I think Melvin would be a better manager for Glaber. And I think maybe he'll clean up some bad habits being in San Francisco. And like I said, the Giants want to win. And they're a team that's had a couple of bad years in a row after winning over 100 games in 2021. So And plus they have an upgrade at manager with Melvin. So I think this Giants team is going to be all in. Jack Flaherty, Glaber Torres... And um, Cody Bellinger. That's a nice haul. Um, but it's not really what the Giants dreamed of, of Aaron Judge and Shohei Otani and Carlos Correa from last winter and even into this winter. 
Um, I have the Pirates trading David Bednar to the Los Angeles Dodgers for righty Nick Frasso, outfielder Kendall George, catcher Thyron Lorzano, Lorenzo, and righty Brady Smith. Um, Dodgers need bullpen help. Um, it sunk them in against Arizona. Um, and I like the idea of Bednar on the pot, on, on the Dodgers. I almost said the Padres. Um, him on the Padres was in, isn't a bad call either with um, them having a need at closer with um, Josh Hader likely leaving. And then the last trade I have, the Rockies dealing Chris Bryant to the Mariners for shorts up. Um, Feldman and Cel- Celestin, outfielder Aiden Smith, and righty Taylor Dollard. Um, Chris Bryant um, just hasn't worked out in Colorado. And I can see him going to the Mariners and being a utility guy DH for them. And you know this Mariners team wants to win. They have good young pitching. And they just need help around Julio Rodriguez offensively. So um, maybe Chris Bryant in Seattle changes scenery. I know it's a big ballpark, but you can still hit. You're not asking him to hit a lot of home runs. Maybe he can get to 25, 30. And then with a good average, sure. And then you can move him all around defensively too. So there you have it for the 2023-24 MLB offseason's Prediction show. We look back at this in April to see how I did.